Hey everybody! Last night I did a big water change on my 125, probably 40%. And tonight, before I decided to shoot this video about how to properly use your API uh, freshwater test kit, I decided I was going to just sort of see what I was dealing with and get some, you know, preliminary numbers and everything. And when I tested the water for my uh, 125 that I just done this really big water change on you can see the vial right there is really red so whether that's 60 parts per million 80 parts per million I don't know it's just really red I expected it to be red but not that red so what we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna check my tap water I do have nitrates in my groundwater and my water system should take them out I do have um, ion exchange resin in there that should remove the nitrates. It's uh, specific for nitrates. So sometimes if I run out of salt or it's not backwashing properly, I do wind up getting some nitrates in my tap water. And if I've got nitrates in my tap water and I do a water change, I'm putting nitrates right back in. So from time to time I wind up doing uh, tests on my actual tap water. And it's probably not a bad idea for everybody, especially if you've got well water like I do. So this is a good opportunity to discuss how to use this test kit properly. And we're going to do specifically the nitrate test. And if you know how to do the nitrate test, you'll be able to do all the other ones. So I don't need to go through them one by one. They have very basic and simple instructions that come with it. Anybody can follow them. Uh, there are a few things to point out, though. One is when you put water in a vial like this, the water is going to want to sort of cling to the glass. And what happens is you will get this sort of curvature of a line. Uh, that curvature is called the meniscus. Uh, it is also a meniscus in your knee. You have uh, menisci, I should say. You have several of them. And they are indeed shaped the same way. That's, I think that's where they get the name, actually. So that meniscus is important. You want to look at the bottom of that curved line and you just want the bottom of it to kiss the marker line and that will be an exact measurement of five mil. I don't know if these tests are that sensitive but for accuracy sake that's how you do it correctly. If you're ever measuring a liquid that sort of repels away from glass the meniscus will be the opposite. It will be sort of a mounded up effect and in that case you would measure from the top of the curved line and you just want that to kiss your five mil mark if you you know for example you were measuring five mil as we are in this case so now that you've got your proper amount of water you simply open your bottle that's easy enough to do let me make sure we're on camera here push that way unscrew your lid uh, make sure you're using bottle number one my first take I picked up bottle number two by accident so we're doing this again simply count out ten drops Be careful not to touch it to the glass. There's usually a drop hanging on. If you touch it to the glass, you'll get the 11th drop in there. Again, I'm not sure whether that would make a huge difference or not, but for accuracy's sake, be careful about that. You will also notice that it tells you how many drops to add right there on the bottle. This is where it gets important. First of all, you want to mix this up. You don't need to go crazy about it. I always sort of squeeze so it doesn't leak. These aren't really that sealed that well. Just turn it over a few times, make sure it's thoroughly mixed so you've got an even homogeneous yellow color all the way through. The important part, I'm not really going to be able to do this in front of the camera, but you are going to want to shake this bottle much more vigorously than this. You need to shake it very vigorously for at least 30 seconds. Now, if the bottle's been sitting around for a while, especially if you've just purchased it or you haven't used it and it's been sitting on the shelf for a month, two months, I shake it for a minute or two. I shake it till my arm is tired and I shake it really vigorously. The reason you want to do this is because there is sort of a crystal-like uh, granule material in there which is your active reagent and it is simply suspended in solution and if you let it sit too long it will cake up in the bottom and you won't get accurate even dispersion so a really really vigorous shaking is required now I've just done a few tests so I don't really need to do a full huge shaking on this one <clears throat> but I'm still going to shake it thoroughly even though I just did a test Likewise, 10 drops. All of the 
uh, solutions that require two uh, different reagents, the ammonia test and the nitrate test. It's both the same amount of drops for each solution, although you do have to do them in the proper order. Now that you've mixed both drops together, you want to do this and just keep that solution moving backward and forward for 20 seconds, 30 seconds. It doesn't have to be a full 30 seconds, but just long enough to really make sure that stuff is fully suspended for a good 15, 20 seconds, and then that should be long enough. If when you are dropping the second solution, if it clogs, or if you can see sort of grainy white material in it, you're not shaking it thoroughly enough. If it clogs, don't squeeze really hard. You'll sometimes blow a chunk of stuff out and you'll squirt stuff out. If it starts to get clogged and you've really got to start squeezing on it, stop, put the cap back on, shake it more vigorously, and then continue. Although at that point, I think I would scrap the test and just start over altogether. It's very, very important to shake the second vial vigorously, even if you've just used it a few minutes ago. You do it before every single test. And if it's been sitting around for a while, you really, 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 really want to shake that up vigorously. Because um, another thing to consider is if you don't mix it evenly enough and you do bad testing, you've now got a disproportionate amount in the bottle. So every test after that is going to be skewed as well. So we're not getting any change so far, and it's already been a couple of minutes. Normally, if you've got high nitrates, like in this example here, by the time I'm done mixing it back and forth for 15 or 20 seconds, I'm already beginning to see some color change, and then you'll see the full bloom after about five minutes. You want to let it fully sit there. If after three or four minutes you're not seeing any change at all happen, as we're not in this case, then you can assume that you don't have any nitrates at all in the water, and I shouldn't have any nitrates in my groundwater and so far this test is indicating that we don't so that is accurate that's the nitrates in my 125 right now so they're pretty high it wouldn't kill me to do another water change in a few days I don't want to do two huge ones back to back and shock the fish that much uh, I've always said that the nitrates aren't as deadly as everybody thinks they are or makes them out to be, so I'm not overly concerned about that uh, bright red vial just yet. This video is mainly going to be about just how to do that test properly. And the two things I really wanted to point out was shake, 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 vigorously shake your second bottle, and of course how to measure the water properly. And as long as you do those two things with these, those will be a piece of cake. Simply follow the directions with the amount of drops you need to put in them and mix them up a little bit and you're good to go. Those tests aren't complicated at all. I highly recommend getting a full test kit for your aquarium. You will, should always have the ability to test water. You don't necessarily need to do it all the time, but you should always have the ability to test your water if something's going on. If you have any questions or anything, you should be able to go right to your test kit and find out at least the basics of your water. What's the pH? Do I have any ammonia? Do I have any nitrite buildup? What are my nitrates? And you can go from there with those basics. So thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed. You never know what you're going to get with me. Um, probably in the very near future, we are going to talk a little bit more about water testing, but I'm going to do it more in a, sort of my approach to water testing and why I test and when I test and what I test for uh, and that sort of thing. This video was more about how to actually do the physical test. So thanks again for watching. See you real soon in the next one. All right, everybody, and through the magic of cinema, it is a few days later. It was not until after I uploaded and watched that video that I realized I never showed anybody how to check your test when you're finished. So it's not really difficult, but there is a specific way of doing it, so we need to go over how to actually do a reading on the test. I've seen people do it wrong. I myself have done it wrong. I've shot video telling people how to do it wrong. I was once told by the people at Mars Industry, the makers of API test kits, that you are supposed to hold the vial against the paper and measure like that. Uh, through much research, through much trial and error and testing on my own and eventually calling the people back and talking to someone else, I found out that that is not true and the way you are supposed to do it is hold the vial about an inch away from the paper, allow light to go between 
you don't want the vial touching you want light to get through it really really changes the coloration on the vial so hold it away put it in a nice good light source and then just do your best to match up the color as close as you can match it now this test as I said we're a few days later here and this test is from my t-bar tank and we're probably sitting up at about 40 parts per million getting close to it anyway it's time to do a water change not urgent but it is time to do it this is my tap water I tested it again today we let the vial bloom for the full five minutes and you can probably tell there that it is not yellow it does have a little bit of brown to it so I do indeed have a little bit of nitrates coming through in my tap water but not much I've seen this vial red coming out of my tap so that's how you do it you want that space in between there not right up against the paper and that's about all there is to it the master test kit does come with the a card that has all the colors on it I've lost it uh, honestly the reason I forgot to even mention it I've just gotten so used to it I can just look at the colors and I kinda just know what they are after all these years I don't really have to hold it up next to the piece of paper every single time I do it so I've lost the large sheet and I've got some of these smaller ones lying around from various times over the years. So I'll say thanks again. Make sure you're subscribed. Hope you enjoyed. Hope that was helpful to somebody. I'll see you real soon in the next one.